let's see, six feet, is that about the right distance? Hey fish friends, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Zenzo from Tazawa Tanks. Now, due to what's happening in the world, I have a lot of time to spend down here in my fish room. Obviously, I'm not leaving the house very much at all, except to just kind of do the bare necessities. So, staying home, not traveling, just enjoying my fish, working out in my home gym, and uh, that's about it. So, what I thought I would do is make a little video and uh, give you guys kind of a tour of the fish room. Um, I know that a lot of you have seen my fish room over the years and have seen different tanks and I've seen it evolve, but most recently it's been through a remodel and I wanted to kind of go over in more detail about some of the uh, things here in the fish room and talk a little bit about what we did and uh, maybe share with you guys some of the tanks and talk about the inhabitants and maybe even talk about some future plans. Well, this is my fish room. It is a room where I have 23 aquariums, fish tanks, paludariums. Um, it's evolved quite a bit over the years. Originally, this was just kind of a working room. Um, if you've uh, seen earlier videos, you can see kind of how, I don't know, functional it was, but it didn't look very good. It didn't sound very good. So um, now we've done a lot of improvements down here, thanks to Aquarium Co-op and also thanks to uh, Dean's Fish Room. Um, so I thought what I'd do today is kind of talk about some of these tanks in detail, talk a little bit about the room, and talk about, uh, you know, a couple features in the room and what we've changed and what's new in there. Um, talking about the lighting and the shelving and things like that. I've made other videos, but I just kind of wanted to create one video all together and uh, kind of uh, incorporate everything. So first let's talk about these stands. These are concrete block stands. Um, I did make a video about this talking about you know how they're built, how strong they are, but also showed you guys how to make them look better by putting some wood on them and painting them. You could stain them, you could burn them, do different things just to kind of make them look more aesthetic and just more pleasing than just staring at the concrete blocks. The other thing I want to highlight in here are, is the lighting. So um, if you remember before I had some really stupid DIY lighting, now we've got nice Phoenix Stingray lights on every single tank down here. These are all the uh, Gen 1 Phoenix lights from Aquarium Co-op, and they're super thin and also really bright. They do well at the plants, they make the fish look good. Um, I do have some circulation in the room. I've got a couple of fans. I've got one mounted there in the corner, and there's another one uh, in another part of the room. And I also put a security camera in here, and I like this camera because I can see in the dark, I can see um, uh, motion, but I also have it connected to the same app that all the lights are connected to. So there's an app that allows me to control my lights and also look at my camera. This is kind of a little work area. We've got a sink back here. Um, we've got kind of a, an area for me to keep all my fish foods and um, other additives for the tank. You can see uh, my shelf there with my sponsors, Extreme and Fritz. And uh, this kind of wall here, I might end up putting a brine shrimp hatchery, hatchery or something there in the future. So uh, anyway, um, let's talk a little bit about the walls. So a lot of you notice these black walls with these blankets. These are sound proof or sound deadening blankets used in acoustic uh, situations to um, make the room uh, quieter. And they also do a great job of insulating. So not only are they insulating, but they're also um, uh, you know, reducing the sound. And then here you can see kind of um, some vents where I've got a heater vent uh, when the heater kicks on in the house and then also the dryer vent. So I'm exhausting the dryer uh, exhaust, essentially the hot, humid air directly into this room. The room is heated by a dehumidifier. So the dehumidifier is running all of the time and that dehumidifier keeps the room at about 35% humidity and uh, also warms the room. Here you can see my Mbuna. This is a 75 gallon Mbuna tank. Um, a lot of you voted in a recent video for me to keep these, so I am keeping them. And uh, a lot of these fish I've had for a long, long time. And just a beautiful tank, you know, just fun fish to have. Um, like to watch their activity, lots of color. This is my 40 gallon uh, West African tank with my, um, my five-star generals, they are a jewel cichlid, and that's the male right there. There's a female. Uh, she's currently in a flower pot uh, guarding her eggs. Um, they've spawned for me a few times. I have given some fry away. I sold some recently to a viewer, 
and uh, so they're just a real fun fish, super aggressive though. This is my African mud skipper and figure eight puffer brackish tank. So brackish water is a mixture of salt water and fresh water. We'll talk about that in some of my other uh, tanks as well. And so these mud skippers are actually a fish, they're a goby. And I've made lots of videos about this. There is a playlist that you can look at and watch. Um, and then we've got a figure eight puffer in there as well. So just a fun tank, you know, really different. I like to keep some different types of fish and uh, just kind of keep my interest going. And then underneath the uh, tank here, I've got uh, this tank. It's another 40 gallon breeder. And this is kind of like a black water tank, although the water looks pretty clear. Um, I did do a water change recently, so that's probably why it looks a little bit clear, but lots of leaves in there to add tannins, wood. Um, I am now planting it, so before I wasn't planting it, but now I'm planting it because of the lights that Aquarium Co-op gave me. Um, I do have some Bolivian rams in here, along with some, uh, some gold uh, neon tetras, or white neon tetras, whatever you want to call them. And there's a couple uh, albino plecos in this tank as well. I might add some corridors or something in the future. I'm not quite sure what I want to do. Um, this is a Tanganyikan tank. This is my uh, Julie de Chromis tank. I also have some Calvus in this tank. The Calvus hide a lot. The only time I find the Calvus is when I'm feeding and they dart out real quick from behind all the coral and to come out and grab food. But uh, tons of Julies, um, they actually spawn for me. And I started with four and now I probably have, I don't know, 15 or 20 of them. These are my top hat blennies. I just made a video about these, uh, talking about how rare they are. They are a brackish fish, but they are advertised as freshwater, but they're not a freshwater fish. They are a brackish water fish. Not a common fish at all, pretty rare. And I'm super excited to get these and have these. Um, here is another brackish tank. This is where those blennies are going to end up. I'm currently in this tank and I just built this and I made a video on how to make this uh, kind of island thing. I do have some fiddler crabs in there and uh, I've got a handful of fiddler crabs that, uh, you know, they're kind of a cleanup crew and they're kind of fun to kind of watch. And um, that's where the blennies will be going. This is my Indian mud skipper tank. So another brackish system. This is also 40 gallons. I've got some mangroves growing out of the top and you can see that I uh, cut a hole in the lid and they're growing out towards that light. Um, there's a waterfall in this tank and um, I've got bumblebee gobies and uh, just another fun brackish tank. Um, just kind of fun to keep, you know, fish from different waters and uh, just kind of, you know, have a large variety. Here you can see the Indian mud skippers. These are one of my favorite fish because of their personality. They, they kind of act like cichlids. Um, if I put my hand in the aquarium or this paludarium with food in my hand, they will actually jump onto my hand and eat directly out of my hand. Um, and that's a waterfall that I built. Underneath this tank, I've got a row of some 10 gallons that just has like some bettas that I use to keep filters cycled. And then I've got some, uh, some grow out and uh, you know, extra tanks for some of my shell dwellers that I sell. Another brackish tank. So this is another 40 gallon breeder with a, a DIY background that I made a video on to show you guys how to build and construct this background. In here, I have a green spotted puffer. Uh, there's the green spotted puffer. It's a really fun fish. This one will also eat out of my hand. I can actually hold a shrimp uh, in the water and it will nibble that shrimp right out of my fingers. Um, and then in here, I also have some night gobies, but they're usually hide in the rocks and caves. Above that brackish tank, I've got some shell dweller tanks. These are some of my Neolaprologus multifasciatus, shellies, multis. And um, so originally this was just kind of like an overflow tank for my display tank upstairs but um, now it's kind of like my mini display tank downstairs in the basement. And then next to that tank, I have another shell dweller tank. This one has my gold ocelotus, um, a little bit larger of a shell dweller, definitely more aggressive of a shell dweller. I currently only have three of them. I started with five, lost a couple. So I have three and I'm not sure if they're all males or all females, uh, but I do not have any spawning activities. So uh, I'm looking at getting some more in the near future so that I can uh, have a con colony of these um, beautiful Tanganyikan fish. I also have a little planet tank in my uh, fish room. Um, I do have a large planet tank upstairs, but a little one down here. This is a 16 gallon bow front with a ton of guppies. So these are some uh, guppies that I got at the uh, local fish club from one of my friends. He sold them and I bought them at auction. And just fun to just grow up some plants and watch them spawn and go crazy. 
This is another uh, West African tank. This is by uh, Congo Tetra Tank. So um, also kind of, you know, blackish water. Um, I've got a bunch of duckweed that I purposely put in there just to kind of keep the cover and keep the fish uh, feeling secure. They like to have some overhead uh, coverage. And I do have uh, six uh, Congo Tetras in this tank. I might be putting some Crebenzas in here in the future. I do have some uh, caves. Um, and things like that down there that uh, might do well with the cribs. Um, but uh, for now, I just have these Congos. Above that tank, I've got a 75 gallon African cichlid tank with my Solosi, either Pseudotrophia Solosi or Chindongo Solosi, whether you're old school or you're new school. Um, they are the same fish where the males are blue and the females are yellow and the subdominant males stay yellow. So um, currently I just have one dominant male, a bunch of fry and a few females and one some dominant male, um, but a fun tank. Another tank in Nikon tank, this is my Brashardi tank. Um, these guys are kind of aggressive as well, uh, but uh, fun to watch when they are not scared, they're beautiful, and uh, they've actually spawned for me a few times. In fact, I only started with a handful, and now I've got a bunch in multiple tanks. I'm here, if you look closely at those uh, little swimming dots swimming around, um, you can see there that I have some fry, so they spawned in this tank, which is nice because they've only been in this tank for about two or three months now, so they've spawned for me in here. Down below, just kind of an overflow 20 gallon, I just threw a few peacocks in there for now just to kind of keep a sponge filter cycled and uh, keep everything going. I do have a 75 gallon, or no, this is a 90 gallon, I'm sorry, a, a 5 foot 90 gallon acrylic tank uh, with a bunch of peacocks. Um, these are all fish that I grew, except for that one large blue one that is an old one that I have in my upstairs tank. Put them down here. But all these other fish besides that large blue one are fish that I grew um, from spawns and uh, raised up. I used, to, I used to breed African cichlids and sell them until recently. So these are just the, kind of the last of my fry. And I'll grow them out and keep some of the colorful ones and end up uh, getting rid of some of the others. And then lastly, down here in the fish room, we have my 125 south american tank it's well basically it's got my oscars in there i've got some uh, i got a pleco in there and then i've got some catfish that are not south american but i have a few catfish in there and i've got some loaches in there but for the most part i love these guys super personable i love oscars um, just fun beautiful fish it's nice to have some large fish in my collection Now that wasn't all of my tanks. I do have more tanks upstairs, my display tanks. Um, I've made videos about those before. I'll put a link up here um, and maybe I'll do an update on those aquariums in the near future. But uh, what I would love to do is I would love to read down below in the comments, which of these tanks down here is your favorite? Which of these aquariums, paludariums is your favorite? Which is your favorite tank? Which is your favorite fish? I really do like reading all the comments. So if you could comment down below, I would really love to read those. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. Hope you're doing well. Stay healthy. Wash your hands. Take care of your loved ones. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.